Now, fair Hippolyta, our nuptial hour draws on apace. Four happy days bring in another moon, but oh, methinks how slow this old moon wanes. Four days will quickly sleep into night. Four nights will quickly dream away the time. And then the moon, like to a silver bow, new bent in heaven, shall behold in night of our solemnities. Go, Philistrate, stir up the Athenian youth to merriments, wake the pert and nimble spirit of mirth, turn melancholy forth to funerals. The pale companion is not for our pomp. Happy be Theseus, our renowned duke. Thanks, good Aegeus. What's the news with thee? Full of vexation come I with complaint against my child, my daughter Hermia. Stand forth, Demetrius. My noble lord, this man hath my consent to marry her. Stand forth, Lysander, and my gracious duke. This hath bewitched the bosom of my child. Thou, thou, Lysander, thou hast given her rides and interchanged love tokens with my child. With cunning hast thou filched my daughter's heart and turned her obedience, which is due to me, to stubborn harshness. And, my gracious duke, be it so that she will not hear before your grace consent to marry with Demetrius. I beg the ancient privilege of Athens, as she is mine, I may dispose of her, which shall be either to this gentleman or to her death, according to our law immediately provided in that case. What say you, Hermia? Be advised, fair maid, to you your father should be as a god. Demetrius is a worthy gentleman. So is Lysander. In himself, yes, but in this kind, Wanting your father's voice, the other must be held the worthier. I would my father look, but with my eyes. Rather, his eyes must with his judgment look. I do entreat your grace to pardon me, but I beseech your grace that I may know the worst that may befall me in this case if I refuse to wed Demetrius. Take time to pause and buy the next new moon. The sealing day betwixt my love and me. Upon that day, either prepare to die for disobedience to your father's will or else to wed Demetrius, as he would, or on Dinah's altar to protest, to live a barren sister all your life. Relent, sweet Hermia. And Lysander, yield thy Christ's title to my certain right. You have her father's love, Demetrius. Let me have Hermia's. Do you marry him? Scornful Lysander! True, he hath my love, and what is mine, my love shall render him, and she is mine. And on my right of her I do estate unto Demetrius. I am, my lord, as well derived as he, as well possessed. My love is more than his, and which is more than all these boasts can be, I am beloved of beauteous Hermia. Why should not I then prosecute my right? Demetrius and Aegeus, go along. I must employ you in some business. For you, fair Hermia, look you arm yourself to fit your fancies to your father's will, or as the law of Athens yields you up to death, or to a vow of single life. Come, my Hippolyta. What cheer, my love? With duty and desire, we follow you. <laughs> Hear me, Hermia. I have a widow aunt, a dowager of great revenue, and she hath no child, and she respects me as her only son. From Athens is her house remote seven leagues. Fair, gentle Hermia. May I marry thee? If thou lovest me, then still forth thy father's house tomorrow night, and there in the wood shall I stay for thee. In that same place thou hast appointed me. Tomorrow truly will I meet with thee. <laughs> ah, keep promise, love. Look, here comes Helena. Godspeed, fair Helena. Whither away? Call you me fair. That fair again unsay. Demetrius loves your fair. O oh, happy fair, your eyes are loath stars, and your tongue sweet air, more tunable than lark to shepherd's ear. When wheat is green, when hawthorn buds appear, 
My eye should catch your eye. My voice, your voice, my tongue should catch your tongue's sweet melody. Were the world mine, Demetrius being baited. The rest I give to be to you translated. Lo, oh, teach me how you look and with what art you sway the motion of Demetrius's heart. Take comfort, he no more shall see my face. Lysander and myself will fly this place. Helen, to your minds we will unfold. Tomorrow night when Phoebe doth fall her silver visage in the watery glass, decking with liquid pearl the bladed grass. A time when lover's slight stalk still conceal. Through Athens's gates have we devised to steal. And in the wood where often you and I, upon faint primrose beds, were wont to lie, emptying our bosoms of their counsel sweet. There, my Lysander and myself shall meet. And thence from Athens turn away our eyes to seek new friends and stranger companies. Farewell, sweet Plato. Pray thou for us. And good luck grant thee thy Demetrius. Keep for thy Sander. We must starve our sightful lover's food till morrow, deep midnight. I will, my Hermia. Helena, adieu. As you on him, Demetrius don't on you. Oh, how happy some or other some can be. Through Athens I am thought as fair as she, but what of that? Demetrius thinks not so. He will only know what all but he do know. I will go tell him of fair Hermia's flight. Then to the woods will he tomorrow night pursue her, and for this intelligence, if I have thanks, it is at a dear expense. But Herein, I mean to enrich my pain, to have his sight thither and back again. Is all our company here? You were best to call them, generally, man by man, according to the script. Here is the scroll. Of every man's name, thought fit through all Athens to play in our interlude before the Duke and Duchess on his wedding day at night. First, good Peter Quince, say what the play treats on. Then, read the names of the actors and so grow to a point. Mary, our play is the most lamentable comedy and most cruel death of Pyramus and Thisbe. A very good piece of work, I assure you, and a merit. Now, good Peter Quince, call forth your actors by the scroll. Masters, spread yourself. Answer as I call you, Nick Bottom the Weaver. Ready. Name what part I am for and proceed. You, Nick Bottom, are set down for Pyramus. What is Pyramus? A lover? Or a tyrant? A lover that kills himself most gallant for love. Francis Flute, the bellows mender. Here, Peter Quince. Flute, you must take Thisbe on you. What is Thisbe? A wandering knight. It is the lady that Pyramus must love. Nay, faith, let not me play a woman. I have a bead coming. Let me play Thisbe too. I speak in a monstrous little voice. Test me, test me. Ah, Pyramus, my lover, dear. No, no, you must play Pyramus. Robin Starveling, the tailor. Here, Peter Quince. Robin Starveling, you must play this big mother. Tom Snout, the tinker. Here, Peter Quince. You, Pyramus' father. Myself, Thisby's father. Snout, the joiner. You, the lion's part. And I hope here's a play fitted. Have you the lines far written? Pray you, if it be, give it me, for I am a slow of study. You may do it extempore, for it is nothing but roaring. Let me play the lion too. I will roar that I will make any man's heart good to hear me. I will roar that I will let the duke say, let him roar again, let him roar again. And you should do it too terribly, that you would fright the duchess and the ladies, that they would shriek. 
and that were enough to hang us all. But I will aggravate my voice so that I will roar you as gently as any night. You can play no part, Bagermis. But masters, here are your scripts, and I am to entreat you, request you, and desire you to learn them by tomorrow night. And meet me in the palace wood, a mile without the town by moonlight. And there we may rehearse most obscenely and courageously. Take pains. Be perfect. Adieu. By moonlight, proud Titania. What? Jealous, Oberon? Why art thou here? Come from the farthest step of India. But that, forsooth, the bouncing Amazon, your buskin mistress, and your warrior love. To Theseus must be ready. And you come to give their bed joy and prosperity. How canst thou thus for shame, Titania? Glance in my credit with Apollota, knowing I know thy love to Theseus. These are the forgeries of jealousy. Why should Titania cross her Oberon? I do but beg a little changeling boy to be my henchman. Set your heart at rest. The fairyland buys not the child of me. <clears throat> His mother was a votress of my order. But she, being mortal of that boy, did die. And for her sake do I rear her boy. And for her sake will I not part with him. How long within this wood until you stay? 
perchance to laughter Theseus' wedding day, if you shall patiently dance an hour around and see your moonlight revels go with it. If not, shun me, and I shall spare your heart. Give me that boy, and I will go with thee. Not for thy fairy kingdom. Fairies, away! We shall chide down rise my longer stay. Well, go thy way! Thou shalt not from this grove till I torment thee for this injury. My gentle buck, come hither. Fetch me thy herb, I showed thee once, and be thou here again, ere the Leviathan can swim a league. The juice of it on seeping eyelids laid will make all man, all woman, madly dote upon the next live creature that it sees. Oh, I'll put a girl about the earth. Having once this juice, I'll watch Titania when she is asleep and drop the liquor of it in her eyes. But who comes here? I am invisible, and I will overhear their conference. I love thee not. Therefore, pursue me not. Where is Lysander? There, Hermia. The one I'll slay, and the other slayeth me. Thou told me they were stolen unto this wood, and here I am, and wood within this wood, because I cannot meet my Hermia. Hence, get thee gone, and follow me no more. You draw me, you hard hearted adamant. Yet you draw not iron, for my heart is as true as steel. Leave you your power to draw, and I shall have no power to follow you. Do I entice you? Do I speak you fair? Or rather, do I not in the plainest truth tell you I do not know I cannot love you? <laughs> and even for that, do I love thee the more? Tempt not too much the hatred of my spirit. For I am sick when I look on thee. And I am sick when I look not on thee. I'll run from thee and hide me in the brakes and leave thee to the mercy of the wild beasts. The wild does have not such a heart as you. I will not stay thy questions. Let me go. And if thou shalt follow me, do not believe, but I shall do thee mischief in the wood. I'll follow thee, and make a heaven out of hell to die upon the hand I love so well. Fare thee well, nymph. Ere he do leave this grove, thou shalt fly him, and he shall seek thy love. I saw the flower there. Welcome, wanderer. Aye. There it is. There sleeps Titania some time of the night, lulled in her flowers with dances and delight. And with this juice, I'll streak her eyes and make her fall of hateful fantasies. Take thou some of it and seek through this grove. The sweet Athenian lady is in love with a disdainful youth. Anoint his eyes, but do it so when the next thing he espies may be the lady. Thou shalt know the man by the Athenian garments he hath on, affected with some care, so that he may prove more fond on her than she upon her love. And look thou meet me ere the first cock crow. Fear not, my lord, your servant shall do so.
waste. It is thy dear. Wake when some vile thing is near. you out to bed? For I want this bank will rest my head. One turf shall serve as pillow for us both. Oh, one heart, one bed, two bosoms and one trough. Nay, good Lysander, for my sake, my dear, fly further off yet, do not fly so near. Here is my bed, sleep give thee all his rest. With half that wish, the wisher's eyes be pressed. <laughs> I'll charge thee hence, and do not haunt me thus. Oh, wilt thou, darkening, leave me here? Do not so. Stay! On thy peril, I alone will go. Oh, I am out of breath in this fond chase. Oh. The more my prayer, the lesser is my grace. But who is here? Lysander? the ground, dead or asleep. I see no blood, no wound. Lysander, if you live, good sir, awake. And run through fire. I will for thy sweet sake. Transparent Helena, nature shows art that through thy bosom makes me see thy heart. Where is Demetrius? Oh, how fit of a word is that vile name to perish on my sword. Do not say so, Lysander. Say not so. What though he love your Hermia? Lord, what though, for Hermia loves you, then be content. Content with Hermia? No, I do repent the tedious minutes with her I have spent. Not Hermia, but Helena I love. Who will not change a raven for a dove? Good troth, you do me wrong. Good sooth, you do in such disdainful matter me to woo. Fare you well, perforce, I must confess, I thought you a lord of more true gentleness. Oh, the lady of one man refuse, should of another therefore be abused. <laughs> she sees not Hermia. Hermia, sleep thou there, and never mayst thou come Lysander near. And all my powers address your love and might, to honor Helen and to be her knight. Where are you? Speak, and if you 
you hear? Speak of all loves. I swoon almost with fear. No, then I well perceive you are not nigh. Either death or you will find immediately. Peter Quince. What say is that, Billy Bottom? There are things in this comedy of Pyramus and Thisbe that will never please. First, Pyramus must draw a sword to kill himself, which the ladies cannot abide. How answer you that? <laughs> I believe we must leave the killing out when all is done. Not a whit! I have a device to make all well. Write me a prologue and let the prologue seem to say that we will do no harm with our swords and that Pyramus is not killed indeed. And for the more better assurance, tell them that I, Pyramus, am not Pyramus, but Button the Weaver. This will put them out of fear. Well, we will have such a prologue and it shall be written in eight and six. No, make it to me. Let it be written in eight and eight. Will not the ladies be afeard of the lion? I fear it, I promise you. A lion among the ladies is the most dreadful thing, for there's not a more fearful wild fowl than your lion living, and we ought to look to it. Therefore, another prologue must tell that he is not a lion. Nay, you must name his name, and half his face must be seen through the lion's neck, and he himself must speak through using the or to the same effect, ladies, or fair lady, I would wish you, or I would request you not to tremble, not to fear my life for you. If you think I come hither as a lion, it were pity of my life. No, I am no such thing. I am a man as other. I'll be an auditor, and after two, perhaps, if I see cause. Speak, Pyramus. This be. Stand forth. <coughs> this be the flowers of odious savor sweet. Odors. 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 Odors savor sweet. So hath thy breath, my dearest, this be dear. But hark a voice, stay thou but here a while, and by and by. I will do the appear. A stranger pair missed an airplane here. Must I speak now? Aye, Mary must you, for you must understand. He goes, but it's to see a noise that he heard, and it's to come again.
head of your own, do you? Let's be, Father. Let's be. Now our translated. I see their neighboring. This is to make an ass of me. To fright me. If it could, I will not stir from this place. I will walk up, bend down here, and I will sing, and they shall hear, I am not afraid. Yes, of course, I like of you, with orange thorny bill, the throttle with his note so true, and the wren with leaf to The fence, the sparrow, the lark, the plain song to do, the note whose many a man doth mock, and dares not to answer me. I pray thee, gentle mortal, sing again. My ear is much enamored of thy note, so is my eye enthralled to thy shape. And thy fair virtue's force perforce doth move me. On first view to say, to swear, I love thee. <laughs> Methinks, mistress, you should have little reason for that. And yet to say the truth, reason and love keep little company nowadays. Thou art as wise as thou art beautiful. Not so, neither. But if I had wit enough to get out of this wood, I've had enough to get mine own turn. Out of this wood, do not desire to go. Thou shalt remain here, whether thou wilt or no. And I will purge thy mortal grossness, so thou shalt let an airy spirit go. Peace, blossom, cobweb, moth, mustard seed, ready. And I, and I, and I, where, where shall, shall we go? go? Be kind and courteous to this gentleman. Hail, mortal. Hail, hail, hail. Come, wait upon him. Lead him to my bower. The moon, methinks, looks with a watery eye. And when she weeps, weeps every little flower. Lamenting. Enforce chastity. Tie up my love's tongue. Bring him silently. When in that moment, so it came to pass, that Tanya waked and straightaway loved, an ass. This falls out better than I could devise. But hast thou washed the Athenian's eyes with the love juice as I did bid thee do? I took him sleeping. That is finished too. Stand close. This is the same Athenian. This is the woman, <gasps> but not just the man. Oh, why you rebuke you, him that loves you so? Lay breath so bitter on thy bitter foe. Now I but chide, but I should use thee worse. For thou, I fear, hast given me cause to curse. If thou hast slain my Sander in his sleep, being our shoes and blood plunge in the deep, and kill me too. You spend your passion on a misprized mood. I'm not guilty of Lysander's blood, nor is he dead for all that I can tell. I pray thee, tell me then that he is well. And if I could, what should I get there for? A privilege to never see me more? And from thy hated presence part I so. See me no more, whether he be dead or no. There's no following her in this fierce vein. Here, therefore, for a while I shall remain. What hast thou done? Thou hast mistaken quite, and laid the love to on some tool of sight. Ah! About the wood, go swifter than the wind, and hell and of Athens wilt thou find. By some illusion see thou bring her here. I'll charm his eyes again, she do appear. I go! I go. Look how I go. Swifter than the earth, the Tartars go. Flower of this purple dye, hit with Cupid's archery, sink an apple of his eye.
to say. This is thy negligence. Still no mistakes, or else commits thy knaveries willfully. Believe me, King of Shadows, I mistook. And so far, my glad and so did sword, as this the jangling I esteem a sport. Thou seest these lovers seek a place to fight. Hi, therefore, Robin, overcast the night, and lead these testy rivals so astray as one come not within another's way. And crush this herb until I stand as I, whose liquor hath this virtuous property. Whilst I in this affair do thee employ, unto my queen and beg her Indian boy. And then I will her charm thy release from monster's view, and all things shall be peace. Lysander, speak again. Thou run away, thou coward, art thou fled? Speak in some bush, where dost thou hide thy head? Come, recreant, come, thou child. I whip thee with the rod, that is defiled, that draweth sword on thee. Yea, art thou there? Follow my voice, we'll try no manhood here. Is much lighter heeled than I. Oh, I followed fast, but faster he did fly. Had fallen am I in dark, uneven way. He will rest me. Come thou, gentle day. Come hither. I am here. Nay, then thou mockest me. Thou shalt buy this dear. If ever I thy face by daylight see, now go thy way. Faintness constraineth me to measure out my length on this cold bed. By day's approach, look to be visited. Sometimes shuts up sorrow's eyes. Steal me from mine own company. Never so weary, never so in woe. I can no further crawl, no further go. Here will I rest me till break of day. Heaven's shield, Lysander, if they mean afraid. Monsieur Mustard Seed. 
What is your will? Nothing, good monsieur, but to help cavalry, peace blossom, just scratch. Oh. I must to the barbers, monsieur, for me thinks I am marvelously hairy about the face. And if it do but tickle me, I must scratch. Oh. What? Will thou hear some music, my sweet love? I have reasonably good ear of music. Let's have the tones and the bones. <laughs> but I pray thee, let none of your people stir me. I have an exposition of sleep come upon me. Sleep thou, and I will wind thee in my arms. Fairies, be gone, and be always away. Seest thou this sweet sight? Her dotage now I do begin to pity. And now I have the boy. I will undo this hateful imperfection of her eyes. And gentle Puck, take this transformed scalp from off the head of this Athenian swain, that when he, awakening when the other do, may all of Athens back again repair. And think no more of this night's accidents, but as a fierce vexation of a dream. But first, I will release the Fairy Queen. My Oberon, what visions have I seen? <laughs> Methought I was enamored of an ass. Hey, oh, there lies your love. How came these things to pass? A uh, Fairy King, attend and mark. You hear the morning lark. We the globe will compass soon, swifter than the wandering moon. Come, my lord, and in our flight, tell me how it came this night, that I, sleeping here, was found with these mortals on the ground. Spartan kind, so blue, so sandy. But soft, what nymphs are these? My lord, this is my daughter, here, asleep. And this Lysander, this Demetrius is, this Helena, old Nadar's Helena. I wonder of their being here together. No doubt they rose up early to observe their out of me, and came here, here in Arnstein, came here in grace of our solemnity. But speak, Aegeus, is not this the day that Hermia should give answer of her choice? It is, my lord. Go with the huntsmen, break them with their horns. Good morrow, friends. Pardon, my lord. I pray you all stand up. I know you two are rival enemies. How comes this gentle concord in the world that hatred is so far from jealousy, to sleep by hate and fear no enmity. My lord, I shall reply amazedly, half sleep, half waking. But as yet, I cannot truly say how I came here. But as I think, for truly what I speak, and now I do bethink me, so it is. I came with Hermia hither, our intent was to be gone from Athens where we might, without the peril of the Athenian law. Enough! Law. Enough, my lord! You have enough! I beg the law, the law upon his head! My lord, fair Helen told me of their stealth, and of this, this, and of this their purpose hither to this wood. I, in fury, hither followed them. Fair Helen.
Helen in fancy following me. But my lord, I wot not by what power, but by some power it is my love to Hermia, melted as the snow, the object and the pleasure of mine eye is only Helen. Aegeus, I will overbear your will. For in the temple, by and by with us, these couples shall eternally be knit. And for the morning now, something worn, our purpose hunting shall be set aside. Away with us to Athens, three and three, we'll hold a feast in great solemnity. Come, my Hippolyta. Masters, the Duke is coming from the temple, and there are two or three lords and ladies more married. If our sport had gone forward, we had all been made men. Oh, sweet bully bottom. Thus has he lost a sixpence a day during his life. Bottom! Bottom! Tedious brief scene of young Pyramus and his love, Thisbe. Very tragical. Merry and tragical. Tedious and brief. How shall we find the concord of this discord? A play there is, my lord, some ten words long, which is as brief as I have known a play. But by ten words, my lord, it is too long, which makes it tedious. For in all the play, there is not one word apt, one play fitted. And tragical, my noble lord, it is. For Pyramus therein doth kill himself, which, when I saw a hearse, I must confess, made mine eyes water. But, more merry tis, the passion of loud laughter never shed. What are they that do play it? Hard-handed men that work in Athens, which never labored in their minds till now. I will hear that play. For never anything can be amiss when simpleness and duty tend it. So please, your grace, the prologue is addressed. Let him approach. good will, that you should think we come not to offend, but with good will, to show our simple skill, that is the true beginning of our end. not by name, present a war. <laughs> and such a war I would have you think, that hadn't it a cunning hole or chink, this long, this rough cast, and this stone doth show, that I, in that same war, as that truth is so, in this, the cranny is bright and sinister, through which the fearful lovers are to whisper. Would you desire that I here to speak then? Since the witch is farthest from the harbor at this falls, my lord, he must drop near the wall. Silence. Oh, grim looks now. Oh, night with you so black. Oh, 
night, whichever art, when day is not, O oh, night, O oh, night, alack, alack, alack. I fear my thisbe's promise is forgot, and thou wall, O oh, wall, O oh, sweet, O oh, lovely wall, that stands between her father's ground and mine. Thou wall, O oh, wall, O oh, sweet and lovely wall, show me thy chink to blink through my eyes. Thanks, courteous wall, jobs you'll thee well for this. But what's the eye? No this be do I see. O oh, wicked wall, through whom I see no bliss. Curse be thy stones for thus deceiving me. The wall we think, being sensible, should curse again. No, in truth, sir, she should not. Deceiving me is this be skew. She is to enter now, and I am to spy her through the wall. You shall see if we'll fall. Pat, as I told you, yonder she comes. <laughs> oh, woe, who often hast thou hurt my mounds for hurting my fair Pyramus and me? I see a voice. Now will I to the chink and spy and hear my Thisbe's face? Thisbe! My love, thou art my love, I think. Kiss me through the hole of this vile wall. I kiss the wall's hole. Not your lips at all. Wilt thou at least to meet me straight away? Tide light, tide dead, I come without delay. Thus, of my wall, my part is charged so, and being done, this wall away doth go. gentle hearts do fear the smallest monstrous mouse that creeps on floor may now perchance for quake and tremble here when lion rough in a wildest rage doth roar then know that I as snug the joiner am a lion fell nor also lions damned for if I show his lion come into this place for pity on my life All I have to say is to tell you that the lantern is the moon. I, the man in the moon, this thorn bush, my thorn bush, and this dog, my dog. This is old Nini's tomb. Where is my love? Roar. Yeah! <laughs> well roared, Lion. Well run, Isby. Well shown, Well mouse, Lion. And then came Pyramus. Sweet moon. I thank thee for thy sunny beam. I thank thee, moon, for shining now so bright. For by thy gracious, golden, glittering gleams, I trust to take of trust this be sight. But mark, poor knight, what dreadful dull is here. Oh, dainty duck, oh dear, thy mantle good. What? Stained with blood? What foreign nature?
you didst thou line spring, since lion ball hath you devoured my dear. Come, dears, confound outsword, outsword and wound the path of Pyramus. Thus die I. Thus, thus, <laughs> thus I. Now am I dead. My soul is in the sky. <laughs> Dung, lose thy light. Moon, take thy flight. Now. my love? <laughs> what then, my dove? Oh, Paris, arise! <laughs> speak, speak. Quite dawn? <laughs> dead, dead. A tomb must cover thy sweet eyes. Tongue, not a word. Come, trusty sword. Come play my breast in brew. <laughs> and farewell, friends. Thus this be ends. Uh, adieu. 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 Will it please you to hear the epilogue? between two of our company. No, I belong, I pray you, for your plea needs no excuse. The iron tongue of midnight hath told twelve. Lovers, to bed, tis almost very time. I fear we shall outsleep the coming morn as much as we this night have overwatched. The fortnight hold we this solemnity in nightly revels and new jollity. Through the house, give glimmering light. Every elf and fairy sprite, hop as light as bird from briar. And this ditty after me, sing and dance it should be. First rehearse your song by rote, each word a warbling note. Hand in hand with fairy grace, we shall sing. Have offended. Think but 
this, and to all his men did they yield, let slumber here while these visions did appear. And this week, and I will see no more yielding than a dream. Give me your hands, if we shall be friends, and Robin shall restore. <laughs>